Hi guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive where we entertain, educate, and inspire. On this channel we do a lot of primitive build and or hunting videos, sometimes theory, just like this one. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing because today we are going to talk about some of the differences between projectile points and knife blades. And I think it might open a few doors for you because archaeologically speaking, a lot of times people find a big beautiful blade like this. Now this is actually a cast of an actual artifact that was found here locally. Now this is a painted cast. We do these here at Hunt Primitive. If you look, if you look at my website, huntprimitive.com, you can actually read more about this one. But like I said, this is a cast so this means this is plastic so we don't have to worry about breaking it and uh, we cast these original artifacts so we can use them for study tools now all that being said a lot of people would find a point like this and say man that's a really big spear point or uh, maybe it's a ceremonial piece because it's so big because especially it's it's shaped just like a point and that comes with a very specific reason is this will over time be sharpened down and eventually lose its use as a knife blade and turn into a projectile point. But why is it not a projectile point now? Could it kill, a, say, a deer the way it is right now? Absolutely it could, but the value of a blade this size is a lot more so than just a projectile point because we could use this as a knife and get many, many years worth of use out of it. Now, if you've watched some of my videos on using stone knives, and I'll drop a little video clip on here now of that, our stone knives are usually, they can sometimes start out this long, but sometimes they're not, not quite, you know, even half this length. But over time, when you sharpen them down, they get smaller and smaller and smaller because when we sharpen a new edge on these, we have to chip a new edge. And of course, when you chip, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually you're left with something that looks a little bit more like this. Now, this is a cast of another artifact. Obviously, it's not the same artifact, so they're different colors, but it's essentially the same point style, a Florida stemmed point. Now, we can put this into a socketed handle and use it as a knife quite easily as it gets sharpened down over time, and it's no longer ser serviceable as a knife. We can then use it as a projectile point. Now, a person might look at this and say, well, isn't this point more deadly than this point? At the end of the day, you're not going to kill an animal any deader by spearing it with this point than you would with this point. If you put this point where it's supposed to be, just like this one, it's going to kill that animal just as dead. So why would you risk breaking such a valuable resource that you could use as a knife blade when when it gets finally worn all the way down, then you can use it when it's no longer serviceable as a knife or a saw. And so here I have kind of shown you what I'm talking about as far as the knife. Remember I was talking to you about this being a cast, a plastic cast. Well, this is also a plastic cast. This one just isn't painted. But I took a piece of large Florida native river cane and just like in my Hafting uh, Noonan or Florida stemmed point video, and uh, I'll link that down in the description as well so you can find that. We talk about taking a piece of large river cane, heating the end, squishing it between two rocks to elongate the, the otherwise round hole. But you can see here, when we heat it and squish it, it's going to turn that hole round. And this tang fits really perfectly right on the inside of that with a little bit of pitch glue and it's actually quite strong. We don't have to wrap it or do anything. I can literally carry this around and use it as a hafted knife and if this was stone I wouldn't really want to do that but since this is a, just a plastic cast I don't mind. It's actually kind of still, still sharp um, but we can use this as a knife for skinning animals or a saw blade to kind of score all the way around a branch before breaking it off. And so this has so much more value than simply throwing it at an animal. Because of its long um, shape, if you'd put this through an animal, you'd stand a much higher chance of this breaking. The animal's arm, you know, front leg coming back as it runs and snapping this point off, um, or simply missing the animal, hitting something else and breaking it, or even hitting the animal and quite honestly losing the animal because of a flash wound and they run off with your point. So 
Could this kill an animal? Absolutely, but it's not a proper allocation of the tool. Because like I said, this isn't gonna kill an animal any deader than this animal is. And this makes a lot better knife than this does. So we use a big point like this as a knife until it needs sharpened down over a long period of time until you're left with something that's more this shape and this size and now this we use for actual hunting. So hopefully that gives you some a little bit of food for thought when it comes to knife lithics versus point lithics.